here today. My name is Vilia. And I'm Adelheit. And together we are Thimble and Plume. And today we are going to show you how to do a very basic draw of a truss file box. So a truss file was a camp follower from the 16th century and she would follow around the German mercenary soldiers referred to as the Langeknecht. Uh, the bodice that we'll be focusing on today will be about 1525 to 1535. I also want to do a little disclaimer here that what we're doing are broad generalizations today. Yes, there are always some finer points, but we're going to gloss over those because we just really want to get out some basic information first. Our main goal is to make it easy for you to start sewing your first truss bra. <laughs> So before we start uh, to try to drape a bodice, it's very important that you understand what type of silhouette a truss bra has. So the reason we choose to do 1525 to 1535 is that there's a lot of different types of silhouettes in what we today know as Germany. So we are foc we focusing this on the specific type of truss bra, 1525 to 1535. What you're going to see for these type of truss bras, center front opening uh, with a square neckline is what we're focusing on today. Far set out uh, uh, shoulder straps and at, at your natural waistline. The first thing is <clears throat> with the square neckline. One important part is to try to keep the neckline very horizontal. Coming. And one of the things that, that we notice that happen is it, it start to drape in the so don't cut too much here. That's very important. First, first really good tip. Don't cut too far. Wait until you have your actual, actual wool cut out to cut this line. Uh, the other part is, uh, it's usually a front opening here in the front. And what we know uh, today is that it's probably used with hooks and eyes, a simple front opening. The other thing we want to look at is the waistline. The waistline is a very, it's a, it's a higher natural waistline. Um, in order to find your waistline, what you're going to want to do is bend over at your side. So it's basically, you're going to be a little teapot, a little teapot short and stout, and you're going to bend just at your torso. So where your torso bend is happening, mine is happening right here, by natural waist. So you want to find your natural waist, it's really important. This time frame they do tend to be fairly high. So if you are if you have a lower waist, it's perfectly okay to raise it to create the illusion of a higher waist, but I am gonna caution you against lowering it because then you're gonna have all sorts of fit issues. So if you have a high waist like me, stick to your waistline there. If you have a lower waist and you wanna make it look like it's higher, go for it. And the next part is to look in the back. Now, if you do a square front line, you should do a square back line as well. So keep in mind of that, that, that you want it square, but don't put it too high, and then you can decide how low you want it. The other thing is when you're dealing, when you're moving that back neckline lower, something that you might want to keep in mind is that with the lower back neckline, you're more likely to have a shoulder strap that slips off your shoulder. And I don't know about you, but there's nothing more annoying to me. So something that you can think about is if you think about where your bust point is and you lay a string, what you want is you want to create a, a suspension that happens, a tension, and so there's a straight line that if you make a straight line running over your shoulder to the back and you keep that angle on your back strap, your front you can kind of veer away from that, but the back strap you want to kind of keep at that angle and that's going to keep it from slipping down over your shoulder. The farther in you bring it, you know, like your racer back t-shirts and such, or tank tops, the farther in you bring it, the less likely it is to slip off your shoulders. So there's a nice happy medium in there. The other thing is the side seam. Um, so the, the bodice that we're going to be draping today is going to have a side seam. Uh, if you have a bigger bust, your side stream probably won't be super straight. It can have a little bit of curve to it which kind of mimics this, the um, curve that's gonna be happening in your front seam. So we're doing a center front closing and it's gonna close with hooks and eyes. 
and it's going to have a slight curve at the bust because you have to have something to fit in your, your endowments. Um, so it's going to curve over the bust, and, and if you're doing a self-supportive gown, you're going to want to probably build a little curve in here. The important thing is the support comes from right underneath your bust, right where about the, your bra strap sits. And so what you'll, what you'll do is you'll have, that's where it's going to be the tightest. It actually kind of makes a really weird jog in. It doesn't look natural at all. But if you're doing self-supportive, you're going to want to include that in both the side seam and the front. And also, if you have a slightly larger bust, um, one of the things that, that for myself, I find a little bit more comfortable, is you can see these lines are pretty far out. The thing with the lines is that the further out they are, the more movement I get. So if I move them a little bit more into here, it's actually going to hinder myself because it's going to grab onto my shoulder and it's going to hurt my shoulders after a couple of hours. So larger sized, I suggest to move those a little bit further to give you a little bit more movement. So when you move your arms, it's not nothing going to happen in front, basically. So those are some basic pointers and general overview of what we're going to be doing today. So let's move on to the actual draping process. front the most important part is under the bust that area here because the bust itself I always make sure that it has a nice rounded area I'm gonna assume that I gonna need to have to cut that part a little bit but I'm gonna leave it at this angle and then we're gonna work on that a little bit more off that I have finished this. But here I have two pieces. What I'm going to do now is to cut out a copy of these. I'm going to pin them together again and put them back on, on Colette and see how it's going to work out. So remember the lines I did? As you can see I added a little bit of seam allowance onto it to be able to pin it back on. And I took the left side and transfer it to the right side. So I know that I have two exact same sides. So one of the things that you can see that is I have a lot of extra fabric here, for example. And the best way to remove that fabric is basically to pull here. As you can see, it disappeared. So what I do is I basically just double check to see where my new shoulder seam are gonna end up and I repin it there. It still is a 
part of it where I can adjust it here underneath as well. That the support for the bust lays right underneath here. So try to make that seam as tight as possible. Now, as possible as you feel is comfortable, doesn't feel comfortable. Fold here that still needs to be removed and that is partly because it's too big. I'm going to do a little bit of markings here. Because you want you have your uh, crown here on your shoulder. Basically, if you lift your arm up, you don't want it to be interrupted here. So keep that in mind. Now, you have specifically told me that you do not want this to slide over your shoulder. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of extra room over here to make sure that it doesn't slide. Check that this seam is correct. Just gonna open it up here. Now, but I also know that this is cotton muslin, it's really stiff. So I'm gonna leave this here because it's still enough for me to just, when I use the real material as in the wool pad. I'm double checking, the waist is still a little low, but I'm gonna keep it there to make sure that I don't cut it too high. Because as soon as I cut this out in the real fabric, it's easy to adjust to cut it a little bit higher. But a lot of things happens when you change from a cotton muslin into wool and denim fabric.